Good evening. I hope you are doing well in this crazy time in our lives. If I would have told you two months ago that we would be where we are today, would you believe it? I would not believe it. But we have to take this time to, to think about who God is and how God is showing up in our lives. And as I look into the book of Esther, that's exactly what I see. I personally have been drawn to the book of Esther during this unfamiliar time. The book of Esther is unique because God is never once mentioned. However, throughout this book, it is intriguing to me to see how God just keeps showing up. Let me show you. The book of Esther is set in Susa where there is a Jewish community. There are four main characters in this story, two Jews, Mordecai and Esther, formerly known as Hadassah, the king of Persia, and the evil villain, Haman. The king is on a nationwide search for a new queen. And this is, I would say, the first recorded beauty pageant, if you will. It is here that Esther comes on the scene. They go through a year of royal treatments. I could only imagine the makeup tutorials and the face wash tutorials that they would have had back then at this time. Esther hides her Jewish identity and becomes one of the pageant contestants and she wins, becoming the queen. Mordecai, Here's people conspiring against the king, and he tells the king. So those people are hung on gallows and killed. And Mordecai gets credit for saving the king's life. That is God. Now comes Haman, the evil villain. He was rich and he was powerful, and he hated God's people. People were to bow in Haman's presence, but Mordecai wouldn't bow, and Haman was full of rage toward Mordecai. Haman was so mad that he planned a genocide against Mordecai's people, the Jews. When Mordecai heard of the plan, he went to Esther to ask her for her help to save their people. He gives Esther the perspective of who knows, maybe you have become queen for this very purpose, to save our people. Esther fasts for three days and she prays to God. The king cannot sleep and he asks for his royal chronicles to be read. The account of Mordecai saving the king's life is read. That is God. The king ordered Haman and all the people to honor Mordecai. And Haman was mortified. God answers Esther's prayers and the king invites her in to approach him. At this point, we see the story take a beautiful turn. Esther was invited to a feast where she revealed to the king that she was Jewish and she was one of the people that Haman's edict was meant to murder. So the king ordered for Haman to be hung on those exact gallows made for Mordecai. Now that is God. Esther convinced the king to make a counter decree so that the Jews could defend themselves. The Jews defeated everyone. Then Mordecai was elevated to a seat beside the king, which ironically was Haman's original position. Now that is God. The Jews were rescued. The book of Esther is like a palindrome, a word, phrase, or sequence that reads the same backward as forward. The whole story, in essence, is a mirror of itself. It starts in a party, 
Esther and Mordecai saving the king, an edict, and then a hanging. Then it ends in the reverse order. A hanging, then an edict, Esther and Mordecai saving the Jews, and then a party. Now that is God. In this webinar series, we will break down the book of Esther into three main topics. Tonight, we will be talking about God's providence, entitled, That is God. Thursday, April 16th, The Making of a Queen, From Coward to Courageous. Thursday, April 30th, Claim Your Crown, Finding Your Purpose. Tonight, though, we will talk about how God made way for Esther to be crowned queen for his greater purpose of saving his people. Because I believe we can find ourselves in the story of Esther when we look back and think about how God has intertwined our lives for his purpose. Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. In reading the scripture, I'm reminded of Esther's life. Esther's mother and father died, making her an orphan, and her uncle Mordecai adopted her. Hadassah was Esther's Jewish name. Giving her the name Esther concealed her Jewish heritage. Esther was able to keep her heritage a secret because she would have learned Persian as a child. So she wouldn't have had a Hebrew accent that could have exposed her. Also growing up in Persian, she would have been Persianized. These divinely guided events in her life allowed for her to rise to the royal position as queen. Although God is hidden from our view throughout the book, of Esther. He is constantly working behind the scenes. Esther 2 verse 15, when the turn came for Esther to go to the king, she asked for nothing other than what Haggai, the king's eunuch who was in charge of the harem, suggested. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. Esther was natural and she was secure not needing anything else to dress her up. There's an incredible book on, on the book of, or movie on the book of Esther. It's called One Night with the King. And in this scene, you see all the other contestants grabbing all the jewelry and everything they can to dress themselves up. And Esther having this secure, quiet confidence about her, not needing all those other things to dress her up. Because she was favored by God. And all that looked upon Esther admired her. I believe if she were around today, she would be featured on all the covers of fashion magazines. She would be a social media influencer. Through God's providence of setting her above the rest of the candidates, she was chosen queen. After being crowned queen, she embraces her calling to save the Jewish people through the counsel given to her from Uncle Morty, Mordecai. Esther 4, verse 13, he says, Do not think, because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will, from, for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Esther realizes that God had called her into her queenship for his divine purpose of saving the Jews. Unbeknownst to her, as Esther and Mordecai prayed, God was at work on the king one night when he could not fall asleep. Have you ever had those nights where you're just laying in bed and you can't seem to fall asleep? Maybe God is trying to tell you something. Maybe he's trying to speak to you. I'm reminded of the scripture in Proverbs 21 verse 1. In the Lord's hand, 
the king's heart is a stream of water, and he channels it toward all who please him. God used the king's sleeplessness to, call, to have him call for the chronicles to be read to him. This was the moment the king was reminded of Mordecai saving his life. This launched the king toward events that would honor Mordecai and pronounce an edict that allowed the Jews to protect themselves from the annihilation. Daniel 2.21 says, God changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. Next, Esther prays to enter into the king's presence and God answers her prayer. God providentially lines up the people in events to bring about a victory for his people. God works like that behind the scenes in our life too. God was never once mentioned in the book of Esther, yet throughout it, we see his purpose behind the scenes. I see the book of Esther as a call to trust God's providence even when we can't see how he's working knowing and believing that God is committed to loving his people. The message of this book seems to be, when God seems absent, has he abandoned his promise? And the book of Esther screams, no, absolutely not. Trust God's providence even when he seems absent. I see this as an invitation to look for God's activity. Although God's name was not explicitly said in the book of Esther, we see his activity all throughout it. Philippians 2 verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. The book of Esther invites us to see that God can and does work in the mess, making our mess a message, making our test a testimony. Waiting on God's timing can be difficult, but his timing is always perfect. In 2 Peter 3 verse 8, it says, To the Lord a thousand years is like a day, in a day like a thousand years. We, in our human thinking, we are very linear thinkers, past, present, and future. But God is outside of time. Esther's story is an incredible reminder to us to watch, pray, and trust that he is at work. Look for God's presence in your life as well. I will leave you with this passage tonight. Psalm 33, 11. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. The book of Esther tells the story of God's unrelenting faithfulness to his people, to you and to me. Tonight, let's take time to reflect on our lives and look for God's constant presence. I will see you in two weeks when we will be speaking of how Esther went from becoming a courageous woman from her place of being a coward. I really look forward to our, our next two webinars. Thank you for joining me.